Hello, everybody. I'm hosting the coffee chat today. And one day, one day, hopefully in the near future, uh, we can actually do a real life coffee chat with all of you guys in a coffee house somewhere with actual coffee. <laughs> so um, I'm obviously joined my beautiful friend, Catherine Edwards, over in the UK. We matched today, one of our favorite colors. We didn't plan that, but great, great minds think alike. And today, Catherine, we're going to be talking about something that I think both of you find really important in this great awakening, and that is what is sovereignty? What does sovereignty mean for each individual? And, um, and I've, I'm seeing this a lot with a lot of our subscribers trying to figure out, you know, we've lived in such a world where we're so controlled with everything, with our social security numbers here in America, our banking, everything's followed and traced, and we're told what to think, what to believe, what to eat. What you know, we're told all these things. So, what does it actually mean to take your sovereignty? And you and I both know you, we have to do things in like small steps. Mm -hmm. As my mother used to say, and we're both vegetarians, but I do like this analogy. My mother used to say, We have to eat this elephant one bite at a time. And so, I'm going to pass the ball over to Catherine. Catherine, let's talk about sovereignty. What's the best way to start taking back sovereignty as a, as a sovereign person? Well, I was so pleased when you suggested this today, because I think it's something what I've really realized. And again, please remember, folks, when I talk about this, I am holding my hand up to doing this a lot is so often we think we know what something means and we don't know what it means. So when I was thinking about the sovereignty, I was actually looking it up and so many people talk about sovereignty. But when you actually look up the definitions about it, the definitions of sovereignty is actually the state exercising complete power and control over the people. So when you look at the actual, and I looked at, I mean, my son's done political science and things. And when I started looking into it, I was horrified, Bryce. I was horrified because I didn't realise, one, how long this had been a thing and how long this had been an agenda. And secondly, how we've spoken loads of times and so have loads of other people about how words are power. So yeah. when you're you know, talking about being sovereign and when I looked at the definitions of sovereign, the, OK, these are the formal definitions. We can have our own. We're going to be discussing that. But I was like, my God, I've really been misusing this word. Yeah, I didn't know that. So yeah, and I was really and and I think this is the whole lesson for me of this whole journey is when you know better, you do better. So now I know what they mean by sovereign and everything can be twisted for good or bad, mm -hmm. then I'm going to start using it in a much more a way and conscious way in terms of always making sure talking about my individual sovereignty. Um, and so for me, what sovereignty, taking my sovereignty back means exactly the process I've gone now, continuing to question and ask questions and look at where my life is being controlled by things that I'm not even aware of, whether it's my own subconscious thoughts or whether it's the powers that be that are putting control mechanisms in place that I hadn't really realized were controlling so much of my thoughts and actions because until I've got that awareness I can't then choose which bits of it I want to to change and you've hit the nail on the head by don't eat the poor elephant all at once eat it one bite at a time because we can't deal with everything everyone watching this is going to be in different aspects of their life so you know my priorities when I was a mum to two toddlers are very different to now I'm a mum to two grown-up children I've got much more time to investigate certain things so for me taking my sovereignty back has been exactly what I've been doing over the last three years it started with a realization like the t-shirts you and I have from our lovely friend Liz if the more you know, or, or the less you know, sort of thing, or however it is, the more, the more you learn, the less you know. The more you learn, the less you know. Because I had this complete aha moment of just how little I knew about a lot of things. There were areas that I knew a lot about, like the natural health side of things, because I've been involved in the censorship of that for years. But there were all these other areas that I knew nothing about, politics being one of them. So... For me, my process of taking my sovereignty back is realizing that actually so much of my life that I thought I was in control in, I wasn't, either through my own subconscious habits or through 
um, greater sort of regulations that have been put on me that I didn't really consciously think that I was able to question. So take an example about that, about we've all, to different degrees, been talking a lot about the difference between maritime law and common law. Then I heard a very interesting discussion that was just on in the background, so I wasn't 100% concentrating, but actually about how common law is a little bit of a mis, you know, direction as well, Yep. Um, because that's another control mechanism. Now, I'm not saying, pretending I know enough to have a debate on that, but, but about how really what we want to be going back is to natural law and the laws of nature. So I've always been up until... I would have said I was a compliant person. So what I mean by that is if I'd have got a speeding ticket, I'd have paid it, that type of person. I actually really enjoyed school. So I would have gone to school if not because I love no, uh, uh, learning. Of course, there were things about it I didn't like, but in general, I love learning. And I would have thought my twin sister, you know, she was always skiving off school and didn't. So I'd have said she was a non-compliant one. But now I look back, Bryce. I realise I've been non-compliant at all because I've never bought into these ideas. So even though I've liked to learn, learn them and listen to other people's points of view, a lot of the time I don't buy into them. Yeah, that that is so true. And I'm, I'm just like you. And what they say, people are like I'm a rule follower. You know, I I like school too because I like I didn't like math classes, but I liked other classes because I like to learn. And uh, and I was thinking about it. You know, we have a lot of like controversy, and for some. I didn't mean to, but when I started reading the missing books of the Bible, it caused a lot of controversy. But there was a time in my life that I took what was told to us about the Christian faith and just believed it. And then you start to read these different stories and you have this different perspective. And part of that taking your power back is being okay with having kind of having your world fall, fall apart a little bit because all of a sudden things are not what you thought they were and being okay with that and being able to, to, cause it, what I think to, I guess what the point I'm getting at, like what you've done, what I've done, what our friends watching have done is very brave. Mm -hmm. So like you talked about your sister, like not going to school, just kind of being the more of the knockoff student, but yet she's compliant now. So I guess what we're looking back when, it, when you have to take your power back in that sense, you have to, you have to come from a place of courage and knowing that you're going to have backlash and knowing that, but, but being okay with that. Does that make sense? Yeah, completely makes sense. And I think the thing is, is this is where it's also realizing that we're all going to come to different things and push back at different mem uh, um, at different times. So I was speaking to a lovely lady in Australia this morning who's setting up a new YouTube channel. And the thing is, we, we all have these moments of awareness at different times. And if we accept that we're all exactly where we're meant to be, there's a reason for that. There's some self-protection in there. And when I started looking into the sovereignty, only very briefly, what I found out in an hour, and I would encourage anyone to do it, just an hour of research, has completely blown my mind and thought, I now want to look at it more. And the way I found you initially, Bryce, was through all your missing books of the Bible. And I was fascinated by that because I was starting to hear all these nefarious things that were going on. My background was very non-religious. We went to church at Christmas, weddings and funerals. I had to do religious studies at school because in the UK, when I grew up, we had to do it. But I literally just did enough to get past the exam. Never took it anymore because there was always a part of me that just didn't believe it, that I was thinking, like history, I, I can get 100% in every history exam, so I've got a good memory. But I was like, you know, I knew that the history the Germans were being told wasn't going to match our history. I mean, that's pretty common sense, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So... But then when I started listening to you and the series that you were doing about the missing book of the Bible, I was like, my goodness, there's so much in there. And it's a bit like when you're studying meditation and things and they say the beauty is in the gaps between the words, between yeah. you know, the silence in the space. Yes. This is what you opened my eyes to with the missing book of the Bible. It was like, you and I would say, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. But, you know, OK, yes, we can accept that this has been completely doctored for nefarious reasons. However, looking for the bits that they've doctored gives us the answers or gives yeah. us a clue as to where to keep looking, if that makes sense. Yes. And honestly, like as you're saying that, it's like I because I've been talking a lot about on my channel coming up and we're going to be talking about more this idea of transcendence versus eminence. Transcendence is what the Abrahamic religions teach. So Christianity, Judaism, Islam, where God is outside of you and you have to strive to get there. Where eminence is what the Eastern religions teach, which is that God is everywhere. 
And so therefore everything is holy. And that's yeah. why the Abrahamic religions are always involved in war and the Eastern religions aren't basically. Mm -hmm. And when we think about sovereignty, as you were saying that, you were you talk about like, yeah, we're not going to throw the whole faith out, out the window because there is a truth here. That's really beautiful that we haven't seen that's based in eminence. And I feel like when you start to take your power back, even though, you're going to ruffle people's feathers, even though you making these changes is going to piss some people off. You're taking that courage to step in more eminence. And when everything around you starts to change, like my teacher in India used to say, like everything outside of you is just a circus. It's just yeah. a circus. What's real is what's inside of you. And I think that that is such a powerful thing to understand when we're looking at sovereignty or taking your power back for yourself, that you you are that battery. You are that spark of life. Everything outside of you is just a circus. It's just a circus. Yeah. You know, so we need the circus. We need it in order to understand it is just a circus, you know, and it's, it's so funny. I get, I mean, with the whole financial, new, the new financial system they're talking about, I've been getting really frustrated. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where my work lies because I'm seeing people just sitting around doing nothing because they think some money is just going to be deposited into their checking account. And that and I think it's perfect for the sovereignty. Sorry. No, go I, ahead. No, I want it. Yes. That, that is a perfect point for what does sovereignty mean for us? Because I've seen so many people um, in the same situation. And um, I've always, you know, I've grown up with, with financial challenges and things in my family and things. So I've always had a very strong sense of I'm going to completely make sure I can rely on myself to feed my animals, feed my children, etc., feed myself and keep a roof of some sort over my head. I'm quite flexible what that roof looks like, actually. But I think that is a perfect point because what we've realised, and I think this has happened a lot in, I can't be bothered to think of a better word for it, so the truth of movement, is I think our focus has been so distracted. Let's get back to the fact that any time something or someone is looking at that that is that what they want with the financial system sovereignty where's my definition here um uh, uh, where the authorities supreme authority exercised of the state over the people the territory full control now if you can't get access to your money to feed yourself to even put fuel in your car or uh, to feed your animals or look after your loved ones or get them to medical care or something i nearly said hospital but don't take them there. <laughs> um, but, you know, that is complete control. And what we've all been realising is all these areas of control that we didn't realise about, you know, all the realise, all the hidden messages, all the hidden things. And the financial thing is really real, folks, because if this comes, fantastic. It's like you don't allow yourself to get horrendously ill and unfit in the work in the hope that the med beds are coming because you might die before yeah. whatever the med beds mean comes that's what i say about the financial side of things if you still take your financial sovereignty back and there's we can discuss how that means to people if this comes and fantastic it's not wasted effort you've just no. gone into it without the stress of what you would have done right. if you control financially and we don't know and i, and I want to like spiritually listen Spiritually, if we look at this astrologically, we are shifting from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. When you think about, like we talked about the butterfly and the cocoon, the cocoon last week. When you think about when things are shifting and grow and, and changing, it doesn't happen overnight. There's yeah. a phase of time where there is destruction and recreation. And I feel like that's what we're in right now. And I don't know, I don't think Catherine knows, I don't think any of us know when that is going to be over. It could be tomorrow. I hope it is tomorrow, yeah. but it could be 10 years from now. We don't know. And, and we can't, we're looking at an astrological time. And you know, it's so funny, Catherine, I've been saying this all the time. We think on this side of, of this battle that we're the awake ones, that we know that we are so awake, everybody else is asleep. But I'm seeing that a lot of our people on this side have replaced one controlling group with another. Yeah, they're not awake. They may know a few things about what's going on with some of these nefarious groups, but now they're waiting for direction from the white hats. 
my thing is like, why are you sitting around waiting for someone to come save you? The point of being human is learning how to save yourself. You know, get up there. And yeah, we, we do have to. There's I've had people send me emails and comments about how I'll put links to Amazon for books and how dare I because it's yeah, not. Same here. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm still living in the same matrix system that you guys are living in. There's no other alternative of where we're living. For me to put a link for a book that anybody around the world can access, unfortunately, that's the biggest platform. But it doesn't negate the power of that book that I'm offering you. And the person I mean, who something served you, like you and I have talked about this music, films, books, and everything. Whether we believe someone's nefarious now or not, if you are getting something positive out of it that transforms you to take more positive action in your life, then take it. Because I honestly, this whole thing of good and bad and everything, if we if we look at the satanic agenda, well, they've been born into that. Yeah. Most of them, you know, look how influenced we all are by our upbringing, whether we know it or not. You know, it's a standard joke that, you know, everyone says, oh, you're just like your mother or just like your father. And the only one that doesn't see it is you. <laughs> um, everyone else can see it. And, and I think when we're looking at sovereignty, I think getting up and taking actions, if we all believe we create our own reality, then it's so important we actually physically do those relate that creating because we can't just keep listening or reading or watching other people do it. Yes, we take in information. You you know you it's like going to school. You have times when you take in information, and then you have times when you revise that for the exams, and then you have your holidays where you go off and forget all about it. Like in life, you know, there's times when you're sort of frantically gathering information, then you integrate it. But the key is then what are you going to do with that information? What action are you going to take? You know, there's no good knowing about um, the child abuse that's going on. Well, what are you going to do differently yeah. with your life now you know that information? Yeah, exactly. And it's all, and I, I, I quote you a lot, Catherine. You talk about when you, you made the comment about the tuning forks, you know, one tuning yeah. fork is up here, it's going to naturally. So you just starting to make little shifts. And, and I, I'm of the belief, and this is why I want to talk about this day too, that nothing's going to flip until mm -hmm. the vast majority of us actually take our power back. You know, this is, I keep telling everybody like, Mr. T isn't the storm. The Kennedys aren't the storm. Yeah. You're the storm. You're that thunderbolt of lightning in a bottle. But if you keep, and that is why we know 90% of the truthers are infiltrators because they're trying to kill, still subdue us. Like the media subdued us. Mm. Now, if, you're, if you traded Anderson Cooper from CNN with another YouTuber, have you really awakened and taken your power back? Are you just listening now to what you want to hear? Like what you heard before, like what you wanted to hear? Are you really challenging that side of you to stand alone and stand in your own power and really go, hold on. You know, I was saying to you before we um, sign on, Catherine, I was really frustrated last night. Now, I will admit, I've said this all the time. I love my reality TV shows. That's how I relax. I love it. The New, New Jersey Housewives, they can fight. I love it. But I know it's not real. Even though it's a reality show, they're paid. They're, things are instigated. I know it's not real. It's strictly entertainment. I, I can compartmentalize that. But I was saying last night, I felt like, holy shit, we're the real housewives of YouTube. Because yes. one, tr one truther will say something and all of a sudden I have all these comments for me to give a rebuttal. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that because your job is like my job. It's like Catherine's job is like, it's just, you hear somebody say something, even me, even Catherine, even our friend mm -hmm. Stephanie, Shanti Morning, you hear them say something, your job and your sovereignty, taking your power back is to say, okay, I'm going to go look that up too. Like Catherine did when I said, hey, let's talk about sovereignty. She went and looked it up. So instead of running up to another YouTuber to give you your answers, why don't you find them for yourself? And then you start taking that power back. You it's start so taking important. that. It's so important, Bryce, because it's a fine line, isn't it? I, I've, I've been talking about this a lot of the month. Everyone's got their own role. So you need some people that are the real investigative journalists that are bringing to light the atrocities of the world and i think that role is really really important and i 
applaud those people so much because having been in it for a little bit, I know how difficult it is. It's a bit like I would equate it to, I work with a lot of abused animals. Yeah. And emotionally, it's so hard. And every so often, you need to take a break to recharge your batteries because however well trained you are, it takes a lot out of you, particularly when you're an empath. And so those people that are doing the real, you know, investigative journalists uncovering this stuff, it's so important. And they need, it's a bit like a surgeon. You can't be, a surgeon's got to be self-confident. They've got to be prepared to make those difficult decisions on the twist of the finger. You can't be sitting there worrying about upsetting someone's feelings. So don't be looking to those people for your spiritual development. Because you can't do it all. You cannot do it all. You can't be brilliant in that and then still sitting in that other camp because the two just would counteract each other massively. Then there's other people who are looking at the spiritual development side of things. And these are just two examples. There's so many other things, you know, your health, your wellness, water quality, land quality, the way we're living, children's education, medicine, you name it. But th- there'll be something that resonates with you and something where you can get up and do something. And and when we're all looking at taking our sovereignty back, like you said, the last thing we can do is wait for someone else to save us. Because I don't care who that person is, they're never going to do it the way that you would do it. I could never be President Trump. I could not handle that pressure. Oh. I not good at handling that level of pressure because I'm too much of an empath in terms of oh my god you know looking at all the individuals and if you're someone that's sitting there waiting for the financials reset or waiting for the re- med beds if you've got a serious health condition absolutely hold on to that hope that they're coming but that doesn't stop you doing something now because in any war and whether you believe this is a spiritual war a physical war whatever your beliefs are there are always casualties and you don't want you and your loved ones to be one of those casualties absolutely and well that's the thing too and i i you know speaking of like the casualty i in literal like people are saying oh we won't get to world war three because the white hats are in charge Really? Yeah. There's always sacrificial lands in any, I won't say the word, but false. And then the wavy things that represent countries in any of those events. And I've been following Oli Damagov for years, interestingly. Isn't that weird how I've been following him for weird long before I knew about all this fiasco? And he is the wavy thing expert, literally amazing. And but there's always casualties, even in the ones that are staged, because they they do that deliberately. And this is what worries me so much is that, yes, do I believe that we're, you know, moving in and in the wage of Aquarius? Yes. Do I believe the transition's bumpy? Do I believe there's a lot of bumps to come? Yes. And the best way for me that I can avoid those bumps for as many people as I love as possible, myself included, is to do whatever I can every day to take my sovereignty back. And you can't do that, I don't think, Bryce, without admitting your weaknesses. You've got to be really honest about your weaknesses. So I am very aware of the areas I know nothing about. Yeah, same. I mean, same, same. Um, and yeah, it's well, it's interesting because your weaknesses, you know, and this is good, it goes back to transcendence and eminence. Like if you grew up in a Western home, you are familiar with the idea of sin and that you messed up and therefore you're a bad person where with eminence, when we have these weaknesses or these moments of what the church would call sin with eminence and the idea of the Eastern philosophy, no, those are just your lessons. Those are necessary. The friction is necessary. So your weak moment, the weakness is in you as my teacher says, and then I say to my students, Oh, this is where it gets interesting. Yeah. Where you're weak is where it's interesting. That's where it's juicy not where you're strong. You know, we're all born. I think Catherine, I mean, I know for me, uh, probably not shocking going through school as a kid, my best subjects were English and history. Not Mm. surprising. Look what I'm doing on YouTube. I've always loved that. Catherine's always been really good at science. So we're born with these strengths, but where the real interesting thing is, is where we're weak. And that is so much about taking that sovereignty back is seeing that weakness, not as a bad thing, but as necessary. And that's again, where it's super interesting. And to have a different perspective on that, taking us from this transcendence, 
that's nothing but just negative and makes people feel horrible about themselves to a new perspective. And even just shifting that perspective a little bit makes you all of a sudden feel wholer and, and like you're not some, you know, the transcendence idea of my weakness is bad because it separates me from God is what causes shame, guilt, jealousy, war, yeah. violence. But when you realize my weakness is actually a gift from God to help me learn myself, to learn my soul, then it's, it doesn't cause that shame, violence, weak jealousy. It just becomes a puzzle piece for you to figure out. And those types of things, like as a teacher, I can sit there until I'm blue in the face and talk about the philosophy, all that stuff to a student. It's not going to matter unless the student actually works it. It's like, take, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And so I can sit here all day and talk about these philosophies, but until someone actually integrates it into their own being, then they've taken their power back. Then they've taken their sovereignty back, you know, and it's a process. I think taking your power back isn't, it's not something that just happens immediately. It's a process. It's a, you know, we, we, we learned that in order to feel powerful, you have to feel powerless. And so in that perspective, what, what the matrix has done for us has actually been a gift because we yeah. all woke up and felt powerless. Like all of a sudden these things were happening to these small, small beings and we felt powerless because there was nothing we could do about it. But then when we learn about it, we start working on ourselves. Then we start to shift because we're changing our inner world. And it's that tuning fork that Seth, Catherine talks about when you start to shift, even the slightest shift, even if part of your sovereignty is deciding that every morning you're going to get up and go for a 20 minute walk to get your blood pumping, to get your mind cleared. Just watch how it just slowly starts to shift all those around you. And it I, to shift. Absolutely. I, I've shifted so much. I mean, people that knew me 20 years ago will be laughing because I've realized that the greatest strength that I can give to those around me is to be at peace. Because when you're erupting in an emotional state, no one's going to listen to you. You're yeah. not going to influence people or animals. You look at animals. Animals do not respond to humans at a higher moment. They don't trust them. In in nature, every there are some solitary animals. There are some solitary plants. But generally speaking, there's far more animals in nature that live in herds or packs or communities. We are one of those, that we are community animals. And the whole point, the only way a community can really thrive is for people to understand who are the leaders who are the followers who are the doers who are the nurturers who are this and if you've got too many of any one of those the community collapses so if you look at a, a pack of dogs it's it's the strong ones it's the hunters that go out hunting and bring it back to the others and then a lot of the others will support the breeding females and help look after the young and everyone's got their place and every role is just as important and you know we're, we're so focus which i think is brilliant on finding our purpose but when we allow ourselves that quiet time we know what our purpose is you know everyone's sitting here they know where they're the type that likes to do the cooking at home or do they like to paint or do they like to mend the roof or do they like to fiddle with the car or do they like to muck out the animals like i do we've all got things that say there's a list of 20 dog jobs you've got in a day we'd all pick different ones that if we had to pick one each and that starts to tell you what your purpose is much more than this whole philosophical way of approaching it is what do you want to actually do, which is why I think you and I have been so drawn to start up some little courses sort of now, which is going back. We're both teachers. We've both spent a lot of our careers in different work, ways of, of teaching. And that's because you want to pass it forward. That's the only way any herd pack society can survive is pass it forward in the old days we did it around the campfire and the elders yes now we're just using different tools to now do we it. stick our elders at home <laughs> exactly <laughs> something hit me Catherine when you were talking about the animals I saw a, this picture was a somebody posted a picture of wild wolves this was years ago and it showed them walking together in mm. their pack and they pointed out what wolf was what and the wolf at the front was a strong wolf. And the wolf at the back of the line was a strong wolf. The sicker wolves, the older wolves, were then behind the leading wolf, 
with the younger wolves behind them and the strong one behind that, helping protect the sick and the way the wolves had organized themselves. And I'm sitting here and I was thinking about, as you're talking about that wolf at the back of the line, the real strong one that was like, I'm going to be the caboose. So if something attacks us, I'm going to protect you guys. And I'm thinking about, and I was, you know, and I was thinking about how humbling that is for that wolf at the back of the line to take that role. And, you know, sometimes a lot of us here on this truth or community, I think we think we're so evolved because we know things, because we know intel. But really, by just doing that, we're, we're the sick wolves kind of in the middle, having to be protective. If everybody kind of took that that time to step back and say, I'm going to be the wolf, wolf at the back of the caboose at the back of the line to protect because I'm going to work on myself and I'm going to take the intel and I'm going to integrate it into me and figure out how to now protect, man, we would go by so much faster through this transition instead of just, I know this and being the loudest and being, you know, I don't know. I just, that's such a, when you, I, I just thought of that picture when you, in that way, the animal kingdom and the animal kingdom doesn't care who's who. No, because they know it's their, their time will come. There's no judgment. In it, and that is so powerful. I mean, when I was growing up and we were walking through the woods and my mum had all her dogs and three children, we used to have a joke that you didn't want to be the one at the back because you were the one that was being picked off. So there was one word that we used to go through with which you would. And it was always like they're going to get the one at the back. So we'd all be swapping places not to be the one at the back. And really it was just to stop us running off in the dark and getting lost, you know. But it's so true. And I think, I I know we've said it a lot. I've 100% reached that place. Enough of the battles, enough of the criticism, enough of focusing on everyone else. It's very easy. And do I do it? Yes, I'm female. Um, but, do, you know, it's very, very easy. And I am actually female. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> same, same, same. Um, same. But it's very easy to distract yourself by focusing on other people's problems, criticizing other people. And we all know deep down, it's just to avoid us looking at ourselves. And yes, there will be people that you resonate with and people you don't. That's why we have choice. That comes back to the sovereignty thing. But if you're going to divert all your energy into what you don't like, then that's what you're going to draw into your life. And I think enough really enough i don't care what anyone else is doing as you said i'm not going to respond to comments about who said this or who said that interesting fine good yep. let's have different of opinions fantastic i don't know what roles they're playing i might assume i know what roles they're playing i don't yeah i don't That's they might right. not even go at a conscious level. So I'm just not going to get involved there. And for me, that's how I've matured the most over the last few years because it was my pattern to get involved and have an opinion. And now yeah. I'm like, no, I just suddenly the light bulb's gone off that it's such a waste of my precious, precious energy. Yeah, the same. And like for and it's it's uh and I've told people all the time, I'm not I'm not the authority on religious studies i'm not the authority in my opinion no one is the authority i just like we were researching this stuff i like figuring out the secrets that were kept from us does it mean that other people are going to find other information probably does it mean that i'm wrong and they're right or they're right and i'm or they're wrong and i'm right i don't know because we're still <laughs> trying to figure this all out together it's not it's not a pissing contest exactly. you know it's we're just trying to uncover stuff and if you're trying to make it a pissing contest then that's something you need to look with within yourself. Because if you're trying to project conflict and friction outside of yourself, then you're avoiding the conflict and friction that's in you. And that conflict and that friction inside of you is that that's what's necessary for you to grow. And so look inward. You know, yeah. I, I don't, you know, people all, uh, I think people think we're, 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 what we're not. I'm literally in my bedroom on my, uh, on my MacBook filming with Kathy right now on a zoom that anybody can purchase. We're just people trying to figure this all out together. And so, um, so yeah. Join the support. And uh, you know, this has been the great thing about the last few years is the support and the fact, and you and I have always said, we love looking at the comments mm -hmm. because there's a lot of people that say don't ever look at the comments because it will affect your ego the good ones will go to your heads and the bad ones will upset you but i don't look at it like that yes sometimes particularly when i haven't done my work that day and i'm feeling sensitive or off balance or you know i've had a glass of wine or i've eaten too much chocolate i've 
I will respond to things. But generally speaking, the whole point we're doing this is because I want to know what other people think if it's constructive. I don't want to hear what's wrong about everything and everyone else. What I do want to hear is what's working for you, what you, you know, what you found out in your research, because every single day we're finding out so much new stuff. And I love it. That's what that's what fires my battery. That's what keeps me motivated. Big time. It's like, wow, you know, when I read this stuff on sovereignty, I won't tell my son because he knows all this. Um, but, you know, when I found this, I was like, oh, my goodness, how many years have I using this word? And I've never looked up how the controllers are using this word. Yeah, I didn't either. And I'm thinking my dad used to tell us all the time because when he was in vet school, one of when he was in vet school, he, he a professor asked my dad a question and he said, well, I'm assuming and the professor said, Dr. Watson, if you assume it makes an ass out of you and me. And mm -hmm. I, he, my dad used to say that to us all the time. Never assume it makes an ass out of you and me. And I was thinking that when you, I was like, I've never even looked up that definition. I just assumed it was what I thought it was. So it made, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And so, and so that, I mean, it was brilliant that you looked it up because I would have never done that. I would have just continued using the word that I thought it meant. And that's that tiny bit of it so now i'm really inspired to go and look more because i can see how how easily you fall into line and controllable you are when you don't understand you've got you know know your enemy is really yeah. really important really really important because it's very difficult to make bad decisions you know you watch a dog going out on a walk it's sniffing everywhere because every single sniff is telling them so much about the whole environment about all the other animals whether there's danger there whether there's fear pheromones whether there's a chance of getting their leg over you name it um but this is the thing is all of this is like you always say and and again i'm so excited to be starting down this journey of learning more about the yoga sutras and the eastern philosophy because that is not apart from my i've done quite a lot of training in the uh meridians the acupoints because that's one of the therapies i've used but the rest of the eastern philosophies I'm so ready to learn because yeah. now you can see how you can integrate these beautifully. And you have courses too. I'm going to put all of Catherine's links guys down in the description box below for her website, her courses. Uh, Cause that is I mean, honestly, like I know we're kind of preaching to the choir and you know, we say this all the time, but one of the, if you're in this point where you're ready to start taking your power back, the most important thing you can do is take control of your health, take control yeah. of your body, take control of your diet. And that's where Catherine is really, really strong. And so I'm going to put all of her links down in the description box below guys, so that you can check out all of her courses, everything like that, because knowledge is power and knowledge protects. And, and I think Catherine and I are very similar, even though we teach different modalities. My job is I want to give the student as much of a resources as possible from the so that they can then take that themselves and integrate it into themselves at their own discernment if that makes sense and that's what Catherine's really good at too is teaching you about these things so that you can then take the information i mean Catherine's animal diet has changed my dog completely completely mm -hmm. like I, I laugh because this house is a vegetarian house, except for Robbie. And now yeah. my freezer looks like a serial killer lives there because it's all frozen meats and stuff. But, and it's, it's on, but the way that you set it up, Catherine, it's perfect for him. And he doesn't have any issues. Like when, when he's out with other dogs, he doesn't, you explained it perfectly that when their nutrition's not good, they have to act extra tough so that they're not messed with he doesn't do that anymore and it's funny i had my doll my childhood doll down for a couple shows i did this week and i keep it up because robbie's terrified of the doll but i held it in front of robbie you know where he immediately went to go sniff her butt <laughs> but yeah <laughs> oh don't <laughs> Yeah, that's one bit I'm not going to be animating for my dogs. I'm not going to sniff at bottoms, I'm afraid. That's one too much. But I'm going to be doing your course, and I'm so excited about it because, you know, the, the great thing I love more than anything is stepping into that beginner mode. Yeah. Because when you step into that beginner mode, there's no pressure on you at all. And you there's know, so many possibilities. So many possibilities. So many possibilities. And, you know, I'm loving it. I watched some of the ones you did with Emmy and Stephanie, and it's like, this is the whole point. It's like, really enjoy that beginner mode. Yes. When you get, you ask any professional athlete, like when we've spoken to Jamie, when you get to the top of your profession, 
you get all the stresses that come with it. When you're doing it for the, the health, the lifestyle, the balance, and you don't have to be good at it, then you get all the benefits and none of the downsides. And as I say, I'll say it again, that the, I'll put my links to the course starts November 20th. I say to my students all the time, ugly yoga, like the ugly yoga postures, they're the best ones. Yeah. I love it because that's where it's interesting. Like, and I'm so grateful. I'll, uh, Emmy and Stephanie volunteered to let me film them teaching them. So you guys, I, we could, because when you see these videos on YouTube, no teacher is going to put a video on YouTube of them doing it like shit. It's yeah, gonna, exactly. for marketing purposes. It's going to be pretty. It's going to be clean. It's what we call a demonstration. And so I'm, yeah, you're right. In the beginning, there's no pressure. There's so many possibilities. But when you're more experienced, there's limited possibilities. So in the beginning, that's where it's the best. That's what, and the, the lineage I practice, you're a beginner for the first 10 years. So kick your feet back, let your hair down, get excited about messing up because this is what this is. You know, there really is no such thing as messing up. It's all part of your learning. But, um, but yes, I'm super excited. You're going to do this. I've got a lot of people signed up so, so far. Good. I'm, I'm really, really excited because that's one thing that I will hold my hand up and, you know, a few months ago, I started doing kickboxing and I absolutely loved it. But then my daughter couldn't go with it anymore. And I could have carried on going, but I didn't. And now I'm really missing because I'm feeling I'm losing that vitality. Yes, I go out for my two hour dog walks and things like that. But I need to now get That's that. Be interesting. I, after we finish the course, Catherine, I might have you and me come on and talk about it because a lot of the yoga asanas, the postures you're going to see, mimic the way animals move. Yes. They're named after animals for a reason because the animals know when to release that energy in their body. We as we think we're so superior as humans, but we're the dumbasses that have to be taught to release that energy when the animals just know how to do it. So <laughs> says it all the time because Romeo, one of my ponies, he does the best downward dogs every morning. And lo my daughter is a brilliant athlete and she's so good. I mean, she's the best life coach ever. I'm not, I've spent fortune over the years on coaching. She <laughs> taught them all because she really gets the nutrition, the body, the mindset, the dedication and the consistency habit and how great it is. But she's always just saying, stop putting off your stretching and just do it when Romeo does it. <laughs> it's so true. My, my Robbie has the most open hips. Like he lays down with his legs spread apart. Exactly. And I'm like it takes humans with all of our shit in our head, and the tightness we get years to be able to do that. He just flops his legs open. He just, exactly. He knows how to stretch and move. It's they're, they're moving their energy. That's what they're doing. It's that's when that's what you're going to see in the Austin is it's just you just moving your energy. And, um, and I would love after we're done with this for Catherine to get, give like a comparative of what she, after her relationship with the animals and what we're doing and, and where we're learning from the animals in the yoga asana. But I also want to say to guys, I know we're coming towards the end of this episode, starting in November. I'm I've told, we've talked, about this on my channel i did ask Catherine before we started to film if she would do like a little five ten minute meditation we're going to be doing a 30 day challenge in november since there are 30 days in november um and this is for so many people who need a jump start or need a little bit of a help to kind of take their power back and so i am going to set up an email address specifically for this challenge basically i'm going to create every single day of the month of november you're going to have a couple of challenges to do you're going to have different exercises. It's not just going to be yoga. I'm going to have some bar. I'll probably find a kickboxing video. We might even do a day of Richard Simmons sweating to the oldies for fun. And you're also going to have some little meditations to do. And I'll send the links. One will be to Catherine's meditation. So that 30 day November challenge is totally free. I'm just going to, anybody who e emails me, I'll just send you all the days to do on your own. The yoga course, there is a price, but that's totally different from the 30 day challenge. But Catherine will be involved in that as well. And, um, and at the end of the 30 days for every Everyone who participated, I don't care if you finished it or not. We're just going to go on an honor system. I am going to put everybody's name into a drawing and there's going to be some prizes. So I think the uh, first place winner, we've got a full month of free access to Marnie Alton's interactive bar. I'll send you the gift card, her web website, which is global. So anybody where you'll, you'll have all these classes with her available for a month. So you can try it. I know uh, Stephanie donated two tarot card readings. And so there will be some prizes to help. I'm happy to donate some of my animal courses. Oh, so cool. if anyone's got, um, I'll donate a, um, the, the, I've got, well, I'll show you. I've got, I can't do the diploma because you've got to do real work for that. Yeah. But I've got five other courses. So I'll give you a free one of any of those. So if anyone's got dogs, cats, or horses, perfect. Then, 
you can um so those because this is what it's all about you know and, that's, and i'll probably pull in like three or four names after the month is over of everyone who came in and we'll just randomly pull the names um uh, and so you're gonna get access to a lot of really cool stuff um uh, from a lot of your friends here on youtube and so and if that helps and i want to say i did read a book a long time ago and i think we are a little misunderstanding about like motivation and this book was called flow it was a great book written by a psychologist about how the mind works sometimes it takes that motivation to actually get you involved like sometimes it's okay to go buy a new pair of yoga pants if that's what's going to get yeah. you on the map the next day to practice to be excited about wearing them so yeah. thank you catherine so much i wasn't even i i, I thank you so guys you got some really cool getting really cool gifts there that are going to be handed out at the end of november after the course after the 30-day challenge is finished so again anybody who I'll, I'll put the email up probably in the next upcoming week maybe by next week by our coffee chat i'll have the email and um, so you can just email me and all you'll have to say is i'm in give me your first and last name so i can put it in a drawing and then i'll just send you the the, the month of november so um you won't have to share your journalings you do you won't have to share with anyone you're not going to have to publicly talk about it it's just for you that's all it's for is for you to start to get on this 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 train of of self self-discovery basically so absolutely <laughs> fantastic so we'll be back next week on my channel so bryce and i are alternating now so this week's on bryce's channel next week we'll be back for a different subject on mine so thank you so much bryce thanks for so much anyone who's joined us today and we will see you guys next week thank you guys too and yes leave us your your because i back to the comment stuff i love reading from you guys we got some really good comments last week about what people are doing and stuff like that that again i've said this before that's why i started my channel i didn't start my channel for the trolls and at this yeah. point i'm gonna start blocking the trolls anyway because 99 percent of the people that watch us are cool af as the kids do the kids still say that cool af anyway <laughs> um they're cool and we hear <laughs> um so anyway guys we love you and we'll see you all soon bye everybody bye bye, -bye.